That was one of the uh, waltzes by Brahms, number two of the 16 that he wrote, featuring the Canadian brass. And they're in town. We're super excited to see them live in the GTA. And that is uh, tomorrow, Center in the Square Kitchener, Thursday, November 21st. That's tomorrow, 8 p.m. The Canadian Brass has been around since 1970. They can play everything from trademark Baroque tunes, Dixieland tunes. They are... um, You know, just so charismatic, engaging on stage, filled with lively dialogue, theatrical effects of all sorts. And I managed to pull out one of the members from the rehearsal today to speak with us this afternoon. It's Chuck. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Great to have you, Chuck. How do I follow all that? I think I think you did it all. That's that's it. <laughs> oh, we're just getting warmed up here. We can't wait to hear you. Uh, yeah. Well, welcome to the show. And Chuck, how long have you been with the ensemble now? Well, in fact, I was one of the original founding group, 1970. Wow! Look at that, legendary. Lucky. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, tell us a little bit. Uh, y- you have a hallmark feature where you often announce the program from the stage. So uh, walk us through the program tomorrow night. What can the audience look forward to? Well, we got known in the early years for exactly that, that we were willing to talk about what we were doing between pieces. We never we never fooled around or messed around with the music itself. Uh, yeah. We treated the music very, very seriously, like maybe like right. a string quartet head or whatever. So right. uh, consequently, we we would talk about things and just kind of uh, familiarize people. We knew they hadn't heard brass that much mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. it would just help to get a head start. So tomorrow, in fact, it'll be a, a similar kind of thing. We're very excited, by the way. I just want to put this in right away. Keith Durda has rejoined our group. Oh, yeah, trombone. Yes, he's from Winnipeg. He had... Uh, played with us for a year when he was still a student at McGill. He's just an absolutely uh, extraordinary trombone player, and we've managed to coax him back to the group. And these will be some of his first concerts back with All us. All right. Nice reunion. Now, you have a mix of classical and contemporary pieces. I'm especially intrigued by the tuba tiger rag. <laughs> Tell us uh, a little about how, how you uh, approach arranging these kind of things for brass quintet. Well, we were very fortunate to have a long relationship with Luther Henderson, who was a uh, a jazz luminary from New York. He was Duke Ellington's rehearsal pianist as a uh, a young composer. Yeah. And then he turned his attention to us. And what he liked about our group was that he could write the jazz for us. In other words, it's not an improvised art, but something where he was in total control. He said it was his improvisation that could be mm-hmm. recreated. So it was perfect for us and perfect for him. And consequently, uh, we have about 130 works from Luther, put us in touch with that whole jazz era. But one of them was, of course, Tuba Tiger Rag. And that was a a new look at Tiger Rag and putting it into the the tuba part, which includes a a very dangerous uh, turning of the tuba, 360-degree rotation while playing a low B flat. Oh, great theatrics. Fantastic. We warned the audience, of course, we warned the audience it could fly. Well, it's unlikely to fly out tomorrow night. I mean, what's the chances that would happen twice in a row? No, I don't think it'll happen well, tomorrow. There's always a chance. <laughs> right. uh, tell, tell us, well, you've been around since 1970. How has the ensemble kind of evolved in its musical direction, popularizing brass music now globally? You guys are everywhere. <laughs> well, we knew that there was uh, a need for a repertoire. There just was nothing... Mm. consequential for brass. So that gave us a lot of latitude, as a matter of fact. And we were lucky that we were able to do a masterpiece approach, which meant whatever we played, we wanted to be the very best of that genre. For Mm. example, Bach and Handel, but it also meant in the early years, uh, Gordon Lightfoot and so forth, so that we could Mm -hmm. play just about any any, uh, style of music and figure out how to present that so that audiences would be equally intrigued. And the challenge is, of course, maybe you have one really nice concert. The challenge is that people want to come back. Yeah. And that's what we've been very lucky to have a, an audience that has stayed with us through all the experimentation and, and changes of personnel right. and so forth. So we've been very, very fortunate. Well, what I love about your programming is that there's literally something for everyone. You've got something for the John Lennon fans. You've got something for the young generation, some cold play in there. You, you haven't forgotten about Latin America, the tangos, uh, some French songs, you know, that we love to play mm-hmm. also. Je me souviens. I see that one on right. the program. But at the same time, you have the the classics, your core kind Mm -hmm. of, you know, reminding you of your studies, you know, the Mozart, uh, the Handel, the Bach you had mentioned. So uh, tell us a little bit, would you say that humor and, you know, a little bit of a theatrical approach is what keeps your audience together, you know, with keeping to that core? Well, you're absolutely right. It is cross-cultural in a sense. 
But what yeah. it displays is our tastes in music. We 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 plumb our own uh, interests to figure out what we would want to play. And consequently, you know, we grew up with the Beatles the first time around. I think they're mm, growing yeah. up again with them. Yeah. But this is music that was in our our sphere of reference. So we were able to incorporate that into our concert. And that's typical brass players played in a concert band, a marching band, jazz band, stage band, orchestras, yeah. jingles, the whole thing. So right. from these different tastes, we can put that into our program. And that's right. basically it makes it exciting for us. And we always try to find music that we can share rather than look at this piece or something. It's something let's all together, audience and us, really yep. uh, go through that process. How do you practice, actually, with all your touring? You know, how do you keep that camaraderie, the, that energy on stage? Well, it's really important that the personalities match. Uh, it would be yeah. pretty difficult to do what we do if we had, say, one guy that liked to carouse after every show or something. It just wouldn't match. Mm, right. Very tight knit. Of course, we're all different, and uh, yeah. you hope to have some disagreements or you know, great things don't occur without the differences sometimes. Right. But what we have found is that it's five guys that can really get together and not only enjoy playing the concerts but enjoy hanging out and we have our the obligatory morning meeting over cappuccinos every day so that's the sort of thing that helps a little cappuccino that that goes well <laughs> yeah yeah well you know it's funny I, i've talked to all kinds of ensembles the Alb alban berg quartet in uh, mm -hmm. vienna had this habit that if somebody didn't come prepared, they had to immerse their hands in cold water and, <laughs> and play with cold hands for the rest of the rehearsal. <laughs> I prefer cappuccino, definitely your system. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I've been speaking with Chuck, the tuba player for Canadian Brass. They're super excited to be in town. They're playing in the Center in the Square tomorrow, 8 p.m. Thursday. Uh, be sure to check it out at Center in the Square. Get your tickets there. It'll be a fascinating um Wonderful, captivating program. There's something for everyone, as we just heard. So, uh, Chuck, any uh, closing thoughts for us today? Well, just we'd, we'd love to see our Canadian audiences. You know, we don't have that many concerts. Uh, right. We're in Europe a couple times a year, and we're all over the yes. U.S. because there's lots of concert halls. But Canada, just by nature of population, it's uh, it's yeah. always a, an extra pleasure to look forward to our Canadian shows. So uh, Fantastic. And we're going to have you next summer up here in Collingwood as well. Can't wait for that. Absolutely. And you know that that is is actually the beginning of our European tour. Okay. That's the first, that's the first show of our European tour. We get on a plane the next day and go to Vienna. Oh, my goodness. Fantastic. <laughs> Aren't we excited? <laughs> That'll be fun. Great, Chuck. All the best to you and your team. And I well, wish you, you. Uh, a full haul tomorrow. Lots of uh, great emotions. And uh, Canada always welcomes you. <laughs> Thanks so much. All the best. Well, get your tickets at centerinthesquare.com. Join Chuck and the entire uh, Brass Quintet, as we know it today. Canadian Brass. Uh, join the concert 8 p.m. tomorrow at Center in the Square in Kitchener. Uh, thanks, Chuck. Have a great afternoon. And here's some Dixie Bach.